here I have the Leica 10 to 25 millimeter f1.7 lens and I'm gonna use it as if it was a prime lens and more specifically I use it at 17 millimeter let's see what happens actually I realized that one day's shoot is not enough for me to have the full 17 millimeter prime experience therefore I took my time to play with the 17 millimeter more before making this video. We all have heard a million times about how 35mm full frame focal length is one of the most popular prime focal length and how it is wide yet still puts sufficient emphasis on the subject to make it stand out and so on and so forth. 35mm or 17mm in Micro Four Thirds case undoubtedly has its merits and a big fan following. Today we're exploring this focal length together using two of my favorite zoom lenses, the Leica 10-25mm and the 12-60mm, not to prove what is already proven but to experience it from first person perspective, uh, how it feels to shoot 17mm, how it impacts my photographing process. Chapter 1. Fake 17mm Prime with the Leica 10-25mm f1.7 lens. The existence of this lens is the reason I still haven't bought any wide-angle prime lenses. It has range, it has aperture, many Panasonic prime lenses are f1.7 maximum anyway, so what is the point of getting a separate prime lens after all the result should be the same? First thing I realized when I went out to shoot 17mm with like a 10-25mm to was that I had this urge to zoom out to 10mm to make something appear more grandiose or zooming in to 25mm to single out my subject. After all, it is a heavy lens and if I don't utilize both the 10 and 25mm on it, what's the point of having such a massive lens on the body? This is when I understand how lens size makes a difference. The huge size and potential dictates that I, as a photographer, subconsciously want to justify the effort of carrying the weight. Naturally, my mind goes to the endless possibilities this lens can create. My mind is burdened just as much as my camera strap. That being said, at 17mm f1.7, it does create a very pleasing bokeh when you get up close. But again, getting up close to your subject with a giant lens is not an easy task. In the end, a prime lens's existence can be justified for its lightweight, therefore simplification of the photographer's thought process. With a prime lens, you go out, you shoot pictures, no fear of missing out. End of story. Chapter 2. Review of my accidental 17mm photo from archive. For this video, I did a deep dive into my photo archive. I was curious just how many photos I've taken in 17mm with a zoom without consciously making the decision to do so. It took me quite a while to, to filter out some photos in 17mm. I didn't pick the ones at 16 nor at 18mm, but only at 17mm. Because at 16mm, there's the Sigma 16 f1.4. That's a matter of a different lens, so I don't want to mix them up. And at 18mm, well, actually, I had a lot more 18mm photos than 17mm photos, simply because there's an 18mm marking on both the Leica 10 to 25 and 12 to 60 lenses. I know that I often intentionally put the lens on 18mm just to try to get that 35mm look. So, yeah, it doesn't count because it was conscious decision and also it is not 17mm. So, yeah. What you see in this video are only at 17mm, strictly at 17mm focal length. Unfortunately, it looks like that 17mm isn't my most favored field of view. I have to be honest that I didn't find that many pictures, nor do they really stand out in the crowd. So 17mm focal length myth busted? There's no magic in this focal length after all. Oh well, maybe there's still the first argument involved that I always had the potential to choose anywhere between 10 to 60 millimeter uh, in Micro Four Thirds system. So what are the chances for one particular focal length to stand out out of the 60 option possibilities? Chapter 3. Black and White. Simplicity. I tried the experiment again, but this time with GX85 and much lighter, like a 12 to 60 millimeter and in black and white only. It can't get simpler than this. One focal length, 
small camera, small lens, no color, one go to experience 17 mm in as many ways as possible. To my surprise, I had a lot of fun shooting with this setup. The lightweight means I can just snap pictures anytime I want in a blink of an eye. No redundant contemplation, just raise my arm, click, and shoot straight to the point. The absence of color takes away the burdensome layer of complexity from the photographing process. No longer do I have to worry about the harmony of color matching and contrasting. All is reduced to geometrical shapes and shades of gray. I found it much easier to just take pictures instead of thinking about focal length and other possibilities. I don't need other possibilities. I just need to take pictures. So yeah, stripping away the potential and the complexity, you are left with just the joy of taking pictures, the desire to click the shutter button. That is a good pro for the prime lenses. It helps your mind to focus, to get rid of the burden and focus on the experience itself instead of the potentials that could be experienced. In a word, more of a living in the moment philosophy. Okay, these pictures are not the greatest, but it was fun to go out and shoot just like this, taking a stroll down the street and snap some pictures of ordinary life stuff. That's what a hobby should feel like. Conclusion. Is a 17mm necessary? Is it worth it? We have established that a prime has its purpose and reason of existing. Now, is it worth it is the question for the money. From a financial standpoint, I really cannot justify the purchase of a prime lens that is already covered by both of my Leica zoom lenses and with f1.7 aperture nonetheless. But it is a romantic idea that I entertain sometimes in my head. However, in the end, I am a zoom guy and I love my zoom lenses and no matter how good the prime is, I would always pick up the zoom lens first. So yes, it is a matter of personal choice. 17mm, it was fun, it was highly regarded, but maybe overrated in my own case. I mean, if I'm ever gonna get a prime lens, and only one prime lens, it's gonna be 17mm, for sure. But on the other hand, it is also a fact that I didn't take nearly enough photos at 17mm when I could have chosen it, when I had the option and the possibility between 10 to 60mm, the whole range but I didn't choose 17 that often. Oh well, that's it. That concludes my ramble. The experiment, however, can continue even after this video because why not? Why not shoot more at 17mm? Why not challenge myself to use one focal length at a time? It's a breath of a fresh air for my creativity and maybe someday I'll find the magic after all. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.